What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Drew and today we're taking a look at another 36 foot tiny home built by Simply Living here in BC. If you've been following the channel for a little while now, you've probably seen a couple of their floor plans. Contrary to popular belief, up here in Canada, it does not snow all the time. It's currently like 30 degrees Celsius outside. You can probably see sweat on my forehead. Uh, before we dive into the inside, we're gonna check out the outside, so let's dive in. From a distance, the tiny home does kind of look like it's built from a shipping container. But as you get closer, you're gonna notice that it's not. What the material is on the outside is it's called metal duraclad. So all four walls on the exterior of the home and the roof itself is built from that material. There are two benefits to metal duraclad. One is that it's super easy to clean. Two, and it's kind of in its name, is that it's durable. Towards the top end of the home, you can see they finished with what looks like a cedar shingle. I believe that's what it is. So it gives kind of a nice contrast against the black exterior. I really like that. At the front of the home, you'll see a spot for two propane bottles. In most cases, what people are gonna do is once you find a spot to kind of plant your home and set up shop, you're gonna switch over to a much larger propane supply. But if you're moving around for the time being, you do have propane available at the front of the home. Next to the propane bottles, you have what's called a heat pump. That's what powers the home's electric heating and AC, which you'll see here in a moment inside. Further down the side of the home, you're gonna have your fresh water inlet and fresh water drain. Directly next to these hookups is gonna be your hot and cold water tap. So if you wanna hook up an outdoor shower or anything of that nature, you can actually do that with this tiny home. Further towards the back of the home, at the very back corner, below the frame of the home, you're gonna find your wastewater dump and your gray water dump. And then above that, you're gonna see your 30 amp power supply, which is what powers the home. The dimensions of the home are 36 and a half feet overall, eight and a half feet wide, and 13 and a half feet tall. The construction of the home consists of a two by eight floor joist system, two by eight wood rafter system, and a two by four frame structure in the walls. Another key feature of how these homes are built by Simply Living is they use a spray foam insulation in the walls as opposed to that fiberglass insulation. The benefit of having spray foam over the fiberglass is spray foam is gonna seal everything up in that cell of the wall. So basically you're creating a much higher R value or insulation value in your home. That being said, they have an R12 spray foam wall insulation and an R24 spray foam ceiling and floor insulation. The dry weight of the home is listed at 15,454 pounds. The dry hitch weight of the home is 950 pounds and the total GVWR of the home is 21,000 pounds. And yes, I read that off of a cheat sheet. Now that we've got the exterior out of the way, let's take a look at the interior. As soon as you step inside, this is what you're gonna be able to see. So what they've done with the front of the home is they've left this space open. So you can kind of customize this space a little bit to what you want it to look like. And I'll step up the stairs here so you can kind of get a better idea of what this looks like. So you have lots of open space down there. You can either turn it into a dining space or you can have it as a living room slash dining setup down there. A really nice feature about this space is they've included these really large windows on either side. And again, those are dual pane windows. And what that creates is a lot of natural light in the space. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the more natural light you have in a tiny home, the larger it's going to feel. Directly above this back window is what I kind of touched on before. And that's your mini split heating and cooling system. So basically how that works is off of your 30 amp power supply, that's gonna power both an electric heater and your air conditioning unit for a day like this. Up in the corner here next to the window, you're gonna see this little dial on the wall. And what this is, is it's called a fresh air inlet. How this operates is by turning it counterclockwise, it opens the fresh air inlet. And so there's a few of these around the home. Once they're all open, that allows for fresh air to be circulating through the tiny home. Another nice styling feature they've added are these exposed beams up here. And this might be for structural reasons, but regardless of what it's for, they did a really good job of making it look cool. And because this is a tiny home, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you would wanna hang like flower baskets or something from that. I don't know if that would look cringy or not, but it might look cool. In addition to the natural light, of course you do have LED pot lights in the ceiling and every light that's inside this tiny home is going to be a low consumption LED bulb. Once we turn around, you're gonna get a view of the kitchen space, but before we get there, they have also added some storage underneath the counter on this side. Sometimes this gets to be a forgotten space, but they did utilize that space by putting in a little bit of storage, and there is good depth to that storage as well, so you could fit like pots, pans, or anything out of the way down there. Next, let's take a look at this kitchen. There are two very key components I look for in a tiny home kitchen. One of them is counter space and how much prep space you have to do what you need to do. And the second is storage space. I know for a lot of people, those two things rank among the highest in importance. 
When it comes to the kitchen, what you see here for prep space is pretty much what you get. But if you step back here, you're gonna notice at the end of this counter, this extends pretty much halfway, maybe even a little bit more through the width of the tiny home. So this is actually a ton of space here and it doubles as of course a dining setup. So you're gonna have room for a couple bar tables or, or bar stools down there. And then as we come around here, you can see there's actually quite a bit of width to it. So I don't think you're really running out of space on this side of the counter. Further towards the stove top, you've got a little bit on this side and then you do have plugs up on the wall there. So if you wanna put a coffee maker or a toaster on this side, you can absolutely do that. On the other side of the stove, it's very similar. Lots of space here. Again, you have plugs up on the wall there and then a little bit on this side of the sink and then you'll have your light switch, plugs. Uh, this little remote, that's for your mini split heating and cooling system and then up on the wall here, that's gonna control your gas furnace. In addition to what you see on this side, they also included a small amount of space right here, this little mini counter. So I don't know what you would put here, but you could definitely store things out of the way. Uh, there's no plug. I was thinking in my mind, I'd like to put like a coffee maker right there, but there isn't a plug. So there's definitely storage there if you needed a little bit more. For prep space, that's all you get. But for me, I think that's everything I need. The topic of prep space and storage space and how much you actually get is a little bit subjective. It depends on who you are and what you need. But again, for me, what I do on a day to day, I think that's more than enough. So I would rate that at probably a seven and a half out of 10, maybe an eight out of 10. Next up, let's look at the storage. Now for storage space, once again, we did have a little bit down there. So let's not forget about that. Above the countertop here over the stove, you do get a little bit of cabinet space as well. Down below on the right side of the oven, you get cabinet space here. So you can definitely fit like pans, pots, anything of that nature down there. Further to our left, a little bit more space. And then you get a drawer right here as well. Then moving over to the left side, you get pull out drawer here, which has all of your manuals inside. Your middle drawer right here, which they have a 30 amp power cord. And then the bottom one down here, it's actually a little bit shorter. The reason for that is likely because you have plumbing or something running on the other side of that, just behind the drawer. Below the sink is very typical of what you would find, but one thing I really like about what Simply Living does is they label every part that you're going to have to interact with. So all of these valves, they'll have numbers on them and a description of what it is and how it works. And over here, there's the water pump in the corner. And again, you get a little tag explaining what it is and how it works. So it's really professionally laid out. It's tagged, it's numbered. You know what it is, how to use it, when to use it. It's awesome. Another thing I'll mention is all of the cabinetry is custom made in here and it's all soft close, which is really nice. Another little bit of storage I forgot was just below the oven. So that's your typical storage you'll find for baking sheets or anything of that nature as well. And that will conclude what we have for storage space. But one thing I wanna bring up is my sweaty forehead. Look at that, it's disgusting. It's so hot in here. <laughs> all jokes aside, what I wanna talk about is adding storage space. Because the tiny home has two by four framed walls and it's a structural part of the home, you can add cabinetry. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you are purchasing something like this, is if you don't see enough cabinets on the walls, if you notice wall space around the tiny home, you can actually add things to that space. So over here, for instance, right next to these cabinets right behind me, you could add more shelving right here and same thing right next to the sink back here. If you wanted to put exposed shelving up there and put more mugs or cups on that side, you could do that. And that's the beauty of a tiny home is that you can get creative and you can customize the space to your liking. If I were to give the storage space a rating, I'd probably do a six, maybe a seven. But again, because I can customize the space and I can add shelving and I've noticed places where I could definitely put some cabinets, I'd probably bump that up to an eight as well, just because I can make this work and me, I don't need a ton of space. Before we move forward with anything else in the home, I wanna to touch base on the appliances really quick in the kitchen. All right, so for appliances, you get this really nice gas range and oven. And what I like about this is that it does have four burners, but it also has room for four pots. Now, I don't know how many people cook with four pots or pans at once, but a lot of the time, if you have a three or four burner stove, you don't often have enough space on each burner for a pot or a pan, but this one, it's got lots of room and it's gas, so you get heat instantly. The oven is also a relatively good size for being a gas oven. You do get some depth in there, so you could put quite a bit of food. You get a couple racks in there. I think you have room for a third rack as well. But overall, the size of the oven, it's actually not that bad for being a gas oven. 
And then of course, over the gas range, you get one of these and this is a little fan. This is perfect for me because I burn all of my food. The sink is also a really great size. What I like about it is it is a dual sink, so you can fit dirty dishes on that side, clean dishes on that side, and it gives you lots of space to do it. Across from the sink on this side, you do get a two-way Dometic refrigerator. This is what's commonly found inside of an RV. It is two-way, so it's gas electric as well. I know a lot of people that's of interest and that's what people are looking for because you're a little bit more set up to be off grid in that way. That just about does it for the kitchen guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about my ratings for the kitchen for prep space and storage space. I'd like to know your opinion. Next up on our checklist is gonna be this loft space. Let's go check it out. The loft is accessible by this ladder and what's nice about this ladder is it's not too steep and you do get a banister or a handrail on the side there. For a lot of you I know the loft isn't really what you're after, but this one isn't bad because you do get headspace to walk up there. You're not crouched over or crawling all the way up the ladder. It is a more comfortable way to access a loft. Once you get up here, it's actually a huge loft. Like you've got enough room to easily fit a king size bed up here or if you wanted to set up as like a two person room, you can easily fit doubles side by side back there. One thing I really love about this loft space is how many windows they've included. So you've got one on this side and that one does open. Right across from it, you've got another large one. And then off to my left here, another one that slides open. So you could open that one and that one and have kind of a cross breeze flowing up here. And then further down this way, right as you come up to the loft, you get another large window. So all of these four windows, they offer a ton of natural light and they really light the space up, making it feel open. I know some of you like to see how much headroom you get up here. So I'm 6'4 and I'm sitting up straight just fine. Even if I did have a mattress underneath me, I'd still be fine, I think. So I get lots of headroom. I can easily chill up here, lounge, maybe read a book or watch some TV. Plenty of space side by side, like I said. And this goes way back. I don't know if you really get an idea of it on camera there, but like, I'm way back here and like there's so much room in front of me. It's so bright, so airy, like I could easily sleep in here. No problem. I really like it. <sighs> also, this might be TMI, but look at my face. Like I got a drip on my nose here. Look at that. I am freaking burning in here. Whew. Okay, back to the video. I'll just give you a view of this angle too. So I am sitting with my back against the back wall here and like, Look how much room you have in here. They do also include a little cabinet off to the left here. So a little bit of storage space. But again, like I mentioned previously, you can add stuff to the wall if you wanted. So if you wanted to put cabinets here or expose shelves for more storage space for clothes or something, you can definitely do that. Now that we're back downstairs, there is one thing I didn't actually mention about this tiny home. And that's that back here through this door, you actually have bunk beds. So this is technically speaking family friendly. So check this out. Back here, you get two single over bunk beds and then a little bit of storage underneath as well. So you can stow things away underneath the bottom bunk, but you get two extra sleeping spaces back here in this rear room. And then right next to the foot of the bed here, you get this little step up and then you can add storage to this wall. You have your breaker panel there and then you have your tank capacities here. A nice addition to these bunk beds is you can see kind of back in that corner there on both beds, they've included USB and 110 plugs on each side. So you can still charge your phone or tablet even though you're sleeping in a bunk bed. Turning around in this room, you're gonna see your full size stackable laundry. So you have a washer and a dryer fitting in this space. And then right next to it, you get a little closet again. So a little bit more storage space in here. What I would probably do is actually put shelving in here and then maybe have a hanging rack up there if I wanted to hang dry some stuff. Next to the laundry setup, you do get this little window that opens and then you have a little folding tabletop here. That's what I call it. And then down below, this is where they put their 65 liter hot water tank. And I have mixed feelings about this. The reason I have mixed feelings about this is this home has gas on board. So you do have propane. And with propane gives you the option to have hot water on demand. So I don't really see the need to put in a 65 liter hot water tank like this, especially because it takes up a lot of storage space where I would otherwise store like soaps or something I would need for my washing machine. That being said, I'm not super experienced in these systems. So if you know a lot more than I do and you have some insight as to why they would have put a 65 liter hot water tank in here instead of a hot water on demand unit, 
please let me know in the comments. Finally, in the very back of the tiny home here, there's this door and that's gonna lead us to the washroom. In the bathroom, you're gonna find pretty much everything that you need. So you've got the little vanity over here with an overhead mirror. You've got a bit of storage below the vanity and then you have storage alongside as well. So you can put shaving cream, soaps or whatever else you need up there. And then down here, you get a very typical RV foot flush toilet. On the other side of the toilet is this really large one piece fiberglass walk-in shower. So it's really low maintenance, it's easy to clean, and it's large enough for people like me where I need a little bit more space. And right above, you do have an overhead fan as well to get rid of that steam from the shower. So what do you guys think? Could you live in this tiny home? Let me know in the comments. Also, if there's anything you would change or you have a recommendation, let me know. I'd love to hear about it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. That really helps me out. If you're someone who's looking for more information on Simply Living, the floor plans they offer and the pricing they have, I've linked their website in the description box below so you can check them out online. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'm gonna go take a shower because I'm sweating like a pig. I'll see you in the next video.